Hey everyone, this is a quick review of the Sunjo 10 inch 8 amp electric pole saw. I've got a branch overhead that I need to take down because it got halfway ripped off in the last storm. So I'm going to cover how to set this thing up, how to use it, and what I think about it. So on this end, you've got your bar oil fill port. This does have an automatic oiler for the chain, so you don't have to stop and pump it every once in a while. That would be really annoying with a pole saw, but it's nice that you don't have to do that with this one. You've got plastic bucking spikes on this side. You've got your bar oil sight gauge on this side so you can see how much you have left. And then you've got your chain tensioner screw right here. You will have to loosen up the cover to tension the chain and then crank this back down. This has got a cover that pops off and it's got a wrench that you can put on it. And then on this side, you've got a trigger with a hand guard and then a thumb activation safety that you have to push in every time you pull the trigger. This is meant for a right hand on this to hit it with your thumb. The cord's pretty short, so you'll definitely need an extension cord. I recommend using a 14 gauge extension cord at least, uh, if not a 12 gauge. This does have a little section for bringing the extension cord in and then hooking it around here. I think that will only work with a 16 gauge cord though, because my 14 gauge cord couldn't take a bend radius that small to fit up through here and loop around there. Now I think the, the biggest complaint I have is that this wrench right here, there's nowhere for onboard storage. It would have been so easy to have a slot and a handle that you could slide this into. Uh, I'm really disappointed they didn't do that. I feel like you're going to lose this wrench unless you tape it to the handle or something. The chain has a cutter on every other link uh, and it is a low kickback design. Just make sure you're not cutting with this section of the chain up here. All right, let's cover setup first. You've got the bar in here along with the chain and this is zip tied to here oriented for the right installation direction so when you cut this make sure you keep the box pointed in the same direction so we've got the wrench the blade cover and you want to make sure you've got this so the cutters are cutting when they go forward like that and when they come backwards on the bottom and it tells you on here how to orient the chain. If you put the chain on backwards or if you put the bar on backwards, you're going to end up not cutting anything and shaking all over the place because the chain is designed to cut in one direction. So now we're gonna loop the chain around the here on the drive and put the bar on right here. And then you need to mess with the tensioner and get this peg on the, the spot beneath it. All right, so we've got the bar installed. It's slot is riding on this guide. It's got the bolt right here for retaining the cover. It's got the tensioning pin right here. The chain is around the drive sprocket and the chain is in the kerf of the bar. We're ready to put the cover back on while we hold everything in place. And then we put this nut on and there's actually a cover around this nut. So you want to pop the cover off and tighten it down with the wrench so you get a good secure connection. All right. Cover back on. Now, this is way too loose, so we've got to tighten it with our tensioning screw right here. So just stick this in. A really long handle screwdriver might be a little bit easier to do with this. All right, see what we got. We need a lot more tension there. So if this is too hard to turn, loosen that cover screw a little bit. Now I've got the chain too tight, actually. I'm gonna loosen it back up a little bit. Tighten this cover back on, and we're good to go. Next, you gotta add bar oil. So you gotta buy that separately. Your chainsaw will be ruined if you run this without bar oil. So, get it at any hardware store. You really should use a funnel for this. I'm just gonna wing it. Now, this is nice that it has a uh, tether on it so that you won't lose the cap. Now, we're gonna plug this thing in and we're ready to cut. Make sure you got safety glasses and gloves. The head on this will also pivot up to 30 degrees. You loosen this knob up and you can adjust it and tighten it back down in any of those positions. So I'm gonna leave it straight for now. Telescoping is really easy. Just take this cam lock, slide it out, and tighten it back down. All right, let's get to cutting. Power-wise, this thing seemed to work just fine for me. Uh, I never stalled it out. I cut probably about three inch branches, three to four inch branches with this. Uh, no problem stalling. It was a little bit slow going, uh, but I think I was just being a little bit cautious with this as well and not applying too much pressure because when you cut through, you don't want the whole pole to come slamming down. You want to be able to catch the weight of it. All right, so after those first few cuts, the chain is loosened up a little bit. I've got this unplugged, by the way. So I'm going to tighten this up again. I'll loosen that. 
and tighten it up. Otherwise, you can have your chain jump out of here, and then you gotta stop and start all over again in the middle of your cutting. So this is better. It's a good tension right now. Lock this back down. All right, so overall, you can see the size of branches it brought down. These are a good three and a half inch branch right here. Worked super well. So overall, I think this is a great deal for a homeowner who's just got a few branches to trim. I've got probably five different battery platforms that all have a pole saw. This thing was just the economy option, and for the only few times I'm going to use it in a year, I think this is a great solution for me.